Up until a few years ago, I wasn't even aware that there was such a thing as the new Andy Griffith Show. However, thanks to that wondrous thing that we call the internet, there are a couple of episodes floating around YouTube that, if you're a fan of Mr. Griffith's prior work, well, you might find them interesting. So, to be clear, the new Andy Griffith show has nothing to do with Mayberry. And Andy Griffith? Well, he isn't playing everyone's favorite small-town sheriff pictured above, Andy Taylor. He's another guy, a bloke named Andy Sawyer. Really, it's all pretty bizarre. So, for whatever reason, in 1970, Andy Griffith decided that leaving the number one rated Andy Griffith show might have been a mistake, and he made the decision to go ahead and return to his bread and butter, the weekly primetime TV series. First, in the fall of 1970, called The Headmaster, and, and as you might guess, the television viewing audience just wasn't ready for Andy to do this type of show. Friday puts us together with Andy Griffith, our new headmaster. This is our school. It's a co-educational prep school, and I'm the headmaster. That's like a principal. Since all of our students are teenagers, we're going to try and deal with many of the situations that young people come up against these days. And in all of these stories, there'll be a combination of comedy and drama. We have a football team. They practice, and they play, and they enjoy it. Our team's never won a game. Our coach is Jerry Van Dyke. Our caretaker and confidant is Parker Finley. This is where I live with my wife. She also teaches at the school. So you see, we won't always be involved with school problems because we have our family life to tell about. We're on every Friday night on CBS. The ratings weren't good and the network execs quickly informed Griffith that he would need to come up with something else if he planned on staying on the air. So, Griffith called up some favors and brought back many of the talented people that had worked with him previously on The Andy Griffith Show. In January of 1971, Andy Griffith returned in the new Andy Griffith Show, a half-hour situation comedy that had CBS proudly proclaiming that Andy was back. Yep, except this time he wasn't Andy Taylor. He was Andy Sawyer, and he wasn't a sheriff. He was a mayor, but he was still living in a small southern town. Not only did Griffith enlist support from behind the camera talent, but he also had many of the actors from The Andy Griffith Show return and reprise their Mayberry characters. Apparently Greenwood, North Carolina wasn't that far away from Mayberry. Ratings for the first episode were phenomenal, and for a brief moment it looked like Griffith may have done it again. It really seemed like the magic was back, at least for a month or so. But then it became apparent that the ratings, while not as bad as they had been with the Headmaster, were nowhere near what they had been when Griffith was in Mayberry. And just a few months later, CBS and Griffith decided to part ways. Now, if you get a chance to watch a little bit of the new Andy Griffith show on YouTube, you'll see that it just wasn't the same. Still, there were a handful of good things about the new Andy Griffith show, not the least of which was the inclusion of the very talented Lee Merriweather as Andy Sawyer's wife. And yes, I am inserting a gratuitously awesome photo of Merriweather as Catwoman here. She only played her once in the feature film version of the classic Batman TV series, but it was a memorable performance indeed. Truly memorable. It's also hard to blame Anne Morgan Gilbert, who played Andy's sister-in-law, Nora. She was trying to step into a kind of Aunt B role, and from what I can see, she did the best that she could with the material provided. If Gilbert looks familiar, it's because she found greater success earlier on as Robin Laura Petrie's neighbor on The Dick Van Dyke Show. I said earlier that it was all just a little too bizarre, and that first episode reminded me of an episode of Seinfeld where Elaine starts hanging around a new group of friends only to realize that they look eerily like her old group of friends, but just a little bit off. That's the way the new Andy Griffith show feels. It's almost like Andy Griffith. It looks like it for the most part, but there's just something off about it. And if I had to whittle it down to one thing... 
I'd point to the actors who play Griffith's children on the new show. Neither of them had the same kind of talent and natural charm that Ron Howard had. That would be it. The absence of little Opie Cunningham really did the new show in. Well, that and the new show also needed more Don Knotts. One brief appearance in the first episode simply wasn't enough. It only left viewers hungering for more. So that's it. Do you remember the new Andy Griffith show? And were you a fan? Truthfully, I just don't really remember this thing at all. Maybe if it had ran a little longer. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And while you're at it, please click on the thumbs up icon. And why not consider whether you'd like to subscribe to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.